Hello all, welcome to the Mechanical Engineer. In this video, I am going to give you a glance on what is time frequency domain analysis of vibration signals and how to identify machinery faults using the time frequency domain analysis. First, I am going to start with what is time frequency domain analysis. In vibration, there are two common types of analysis are there. One is time domain analysis. In the time domain analysis, in the x-axis, you will have time and in the y-axis, you will have amplitude. In case of frequency domain analysis, in the x-axis, you will have frequency and in y-axis, you will have amplitude. So the time to frequency domain conversion is carried out using fast Fourier transform. So the advantage of frequency domain analysis, we can identify the faults using frequency domain analysis. We can convert the time domain signal into a frequency domain signal and from the frequency domain signal based on the pattern of the signals we can identify the faults. Now coming to time frequency domain analysis this time frequency domain has time as the x-axis and frequency as the y-axis. Okay, So this transformation is carried out based on various transforms I'll come to that later. So this time frequency domain analysis has the information of both time domain and frequency domain analysis. So the analysis of non-stationary and non-linear signals will be carried out very easily with the help of time frequency domain analysis. So here you can see that there are three signals are there. In time domain analysis, we cannot split the three signals individually. In case of frequency domain analysis, we can split the three signals at what frequency how much is the amplitude? That is what the information we can get it from the frequency domain. In case of time frequency domain analysis, we can identify at what time, at what frequency the energy concentration occurs. So we can get the information of both the time as well as the frequency. So this will be very easy for fault identification. There are many time frequency domain transforms are available. The most common types are short time Fourier transform, then uh, wavelet transform, then wigner oil transform. Nowadays people are using uh, CWT, continuous wavelet transform, then uh, Q transforms. There are plenty of transforms are available. So each transform will increase the effectiveness of the fault identification. So first of all, time frequency domain analysis of bearing faults. So how uh, the faults in a bearing can be identified using time frequency domain analysis. In general, the bearings are subjected to these four types of faults. So one is inner race fault, that is fault at the inner race. You will have a crack or maybe a, a pit hole in the inner race. Then second one is outer race fault, it's fault in the outer race. Then ball fault, so there may be a defect in the ball, maybe a worn out ball will be there. Then the last one is cage defect, so fault in the Gauge. So these four are the common faults in the bearings. So before going for fault identification of any components, first we must identify the fault frequencies. In case of bearing, as I said earlier, there will be four faults. So there will be four fault frequencies. So BPFO is ball pass frequency outer race. PPFI is ball pass frequency inner race. Then ball defect frequency and cage defect frequency. So these are the equations for calculating the fault frequency. So here, N is the number of balls and uh, BD is the ball diameter, PD is the pitch diameter and beta is the contact angle of the bearing and F is the running speed in heads. So now, before going to the fault identification, you can get the specifications of the bearings and you can identify the, you can calculate the fault frequencies of each bearings. Second one is gear fault. So in gear, the most common type of fault is wear tooth and a broken tooth. So there may be a small amount of wear in tooth or uh, a part of a tooth will be broken. The gear fault frequency can be calculated using this equation that is number of teeth into speed in heads. So for example, if you are going to identify the fault of a whole component, you have to calculate the gear mesh frequencies of all gears and uh, the bearing fault frequencies of all gears. Now you can go into the analysis. So this is an example analysis of uh, example time frequency domain analysis of a signal. So this is actually the uh, frequency domain signal. So I have 
used f of t to extract this signal. So here you can see that now I am going to compare uh, the difference between uh, fast Fourier transform and the short time Fourier transform that is time frequency domain analysis. So here you can see that around uh, 2800 Hz we have a peak and here in the time frequency domain analysis around 2800 Hz so this is actually in kilohertz you can see a energy concentration. Similarly around uh, 3500 Hz uh, there, will, there is a peak in the frequency domain and here also around 3500 you have a energy concentration. So the fault identification, now we have uh, the fault frequencies of uh, bearings and gears. So four frequencies for bearing and two frequency for gear that is your one for pinion and another one for gear. So in uh, frequency domain analysis we will compare the frequencies of uh, the faults with this plot. For example, if my gear mesh frequency matches with the peak value in the frequency domain uh, signal, then we can identify the fault is there at the gear. For example, if my BPFO that is ball pass frequency outer race uh, is around uh, 3500 Hz, then we can confirm that in the 3500 Hz there is a peak which means that there is a fault in the outer race because the BPFO matches with this peak value. So this is the common procedure. Uh, we are following to identify the faults in the frequency domain. The same procedure you can follow it for time frequency domain analysis. So here the peak, uh, the energy concentration occurs at the place of the peak frequency. Okay. So the advantage of uh, time frequency domain analysis is you will have energy concentration at the fault frequency or otherwise in its harmonics. Harmonics means maybe you can have it at uh, 1x or 2x or 3x. So this is how you can identify the faults in the time frequency domain analysis. Now uh, you may ask that uh, then what is the advantage of uh, time frequency domain analysis over uh, frequency domain analysis. So actually this is a basic transform. Short time Fourier transform is a basic transform. Now we have plenty of transforms for noise reduction. So here you can see that there are plenty of unwanted noises are there. In frequency domain also you can see that. By using some advanced uh, transforms like uh, CWT, then you can neglect these unwanted noises and the cross terms so that you will get an exact energy concentration at the fault frequency. So you will not have these uh, unwanted noises when you are using the advanced transforms. So that is the advantage of time frequency domain analysis. You have plenty of transforms. So based on your uh, need and your application, you can select the transforms accordingly and you can identify the faults. So these are all the two major advantages. As I said earlier, it has high resolution in both time and frequency. So you can extract both the time and frequency domain informations from the time frequency domain plot. And there is no cross terms. So cross terms means it avoids the unwanted noises because when you are performing a time frequency domain analysis with the help of any advanced transforms, then you can remove the unwanted cross terms so that the fault identification will be effective. So this is a time frequency domain analysis of vibration signal. Now the methodology of fault identification. For example, if you are uh, installing a system for continuous monitoring that is 24 bar 7, you are going to monitor the system means then you need to prepare a methodology for fault identification. Okay, So this is the methodology uh, when you are using time frequency domain analysis. So initially we are going to measure the vibration signals, then we are going to convert the vibration signals measured into time frequency domain signals. So you can use any one of the transforms, either you can use FTFT or you can use wavelet transform or you can use CWT or you can use any one of the transform to convert the time domain signal into time frequency domain signal. So now you have a time frequency domain image. But with this image you cannot conclude that uh, the fault occurs in a particular system which means that you cannot directly conclude by visualizing the images. So what researchers are following is they are extracting features. Okay, So they are extracting the information about the faults from the time frequency domain signals and from the extracted features they are going for future classification. Okay, So in general, so these three are used by researchers in future extraction. Okay, so they have used HOG, histogram of oriented gradients 
and uh, some of them have used uh, speeded up robust futures and uh, LBF futures. So these are all the commonly used uh, future extraction technique for time frequency domain images. So you can use any image future extraction technique for extracting the information from the time frequency domain. So after extracting these futures, then we can go for future classification. So for future classification, you can use any one of the machine learning algorithm. You can use support vector machine or otherwise you can use artificial neural network. Then you can use uh, K-nearest neighbor and neighbors. So among this, SVM is most commonly used in fault identification with the help of time frequency domain analysis. So here in this methodology, we have extracted the futures and we have classified the futures for fault identification. So in this case, you need to train your algorithm. So first you need to split your data or otherwise initially while installing the machinery, you have to capture the vibration. Okay, so you have to uh, create the faults or you have to uh, induce the faults manually and you have to capture the vibration signals of the faulty system. So you have to use that vibration signals to train your algorithm. So these are all the algorithms. So you have to train your algorithm using the captured features. Then to ensure the effectiveness of your algorithm, then you can test it. So once if you test and uh, you, uh, if you confirm that your algorithm is working perfectly, then you can go for real fault identification. But using the same methodology, you can follow the fault identification. The second advancement is the image classification. So here we are not going to extract uh, the features from the uh, time frequency domain signals. We are directly going to classify the images. So initial stage is vibration measurement, then frequent time frequency conversion, then these time frequency images are directly given as an input to image classification algorithm. So in image classification algorithm, the CNN is most commonly used, but nowadays people are using LSTM networks. Anyway, it's an advancement of a CNN, so you can use any one of the image classification algorithm for fault identification. So here also we are going to split the data into training and test. So here also you need train data because without training data you cannot uh, form a methodology like this. You need a train data and uh, so that you can confirm your uh, effectiveness of your algorithm. So here we are directly going to give the input uh, as your time frequency domain signal and uh, we are going to identify the faults. The output will be your fault. So in case if you don't have any uh, training set, then you can go for unsupervised learning or otherwise you can directly extract the signal. In case of bearing and gear faults, then you can you have uh, uh, standard data, standard data for, uh, I mean standard uh, fault signatures are there like uh, BPFO and uh, gear mass frequency, you have standard frequencies, uh, fault frequencies are there. In case if you are going for any real fault identification of bearings and gears, then you can get the data. For example, for bearing numbers, you can calculate the bearing fault frequency. So by calculating the bearing fault frequencies and uh, by comparing it with your time frequency domain signals, then you can conclude that. So the energy concentration will be at the fault frequencies or otherwise in its harmonic. So uh, likewise, you can conclude in case of real fault diagnosis. So in case of research, or otherwise, you know, you, if you are developing a new algorithm for uh, future classification or image classification, then you can follow any one of this methodology for identifying the faults in the system. So thank you.